All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Eden. Um, as Dr. Mann mentioned, I'm an undergrad senior at Duke University. And uh, this past summer, I was part of the summer research training program um, at the Myon Lab at Mount Sinai. So today I'll be presenting on identifying uh, therapeutic targets from RNA sequencing of senescent cells um, using a few different tools that have been developed by the lab. So I'll start just by uh, providing some background on cellu cellular senescence and why we're interested in it. Um, then I'll introduce the APITER tool that was used to identify senescence targets. Um, and I'll demonstrate how we selected a set of potential protein targets for senescent cell removal. Finally, I'll just highlight uh, one of these targets and I'll present some um, exploratory enrichment analyses that connect the top genes that we found. So cellular senescence is a state of permanent cell cycle arrest, um, and it's been implicated as a key contributor to aging. There's recently been a large body of evidence suggesting that removing senescent cells through senolytic therapy, um, it might be an effective treatment against a lot of different uh, age-related diseases. So as far as we know, uh, aging-related senescence, uh, is, it's induced by like, a pretty complex variety of stressors, um, and there's definitely variability by cell and tissue types, but there is evidence for common molecular markers uh, across these heterogeneous senescence phenotypes. So in this project, that's kind of what we were interested in looking at. Um, the specific form of senescence that we chose to study is called replicative senescence, or RS, um, and it recurs as uh, a result of most of our cells' limited capacity to divide. So this is known as the Hayflick limit. And during aging, we believe that there's just more and more cells reaching this limit um, and entering a state of senescence. So one of the reasons we chose to focus on RS um, as opposed to other forms of senescence has to do with an interesting difference between uh, mouse models and humans. So mice, which have been like the popular model used to study senescence in vivo, um, they've been shown uh, that RS specifically occurs by different mechanisms in marine cells uh, compared to human cells. So in humans, uh, it's pretty much directly caused by telomere shortening. But in mice, for a variety of reasons, um, including their much longer telomeres, RS seems to be induced by oxidative stress and some other environmental factors. So by studying RS in human cells, we hoped to just capture some senescence targets that maybe um, aren't as well known from mouse models of senescence. Similar to cancer, uh, senescent cells become pathological when they start just being able to evade clearance by the immune system. So in normal senescence processes, uh, they should be routinely cleared. Um, and so as a result, there's been a lot of interest in senolytic immunotherapy to treat age-related conditions. But a big challenge for uh, just immunotherapy in general is being able to identify cell surface proteins that can actually facilitate uh, targeted cell removal. So for instance, um, using ADCs or CAR T cells. And in 2017, Boss et al., uh, this was a group, they published an interesting study where they developed a prioritization algorithm that uh, compared RNA-seq data from a patient's tumor to normal RNA-seq from the GTEx consortium. And their goal was to identify targets that were only highly expressed in the tumor with uh, low expression across all of their normal tissues. They also prioritized uh, cell surface proteins, which in general, are more ideal candidates for immunotherapy. So using this approach, uh, they were able to identify a candidate protein, um, which they targeted with an ADC. And this allowed them to safely and effectively deliver cytotoxic drugs uh, that eliminated neuroblastoma cells both in vitro and in vivo. There have been a few similar strategies that have been used to identify markers in senescent cells. Um, and uh, these two research groups also demonstrated successful targeting with uh, ADCs and CAR T cells uh, of those senescence targets. So inspired by uh, the concept described by Boss et al. and a few of those other research groups, uh, the Myon Lab, we wanted to develop a publicly accessible tool uh, that could facilitate this type of identification and visualization of targets 
uh, with some added depth and also some more user options. So this tool is called the Tumor Gene Target Screener Apiter. Um, it was mainly developed by Daniel Clark, who's a data, data scientist in the lab. And how it works is a user can upload transcriptomic data from a sample uh, to identify targets for any disease or biological condition of interest. Uh, so for this analysis, we applied the Tumor Gene Target Screener to find targets in RS cells specifically. My own contribution to this apiter um, was adding visualizations of protein expression from three different protein atlas efforts. So having protein expression from normal cells and tissues uh, is really useful because we know that mRNA expression of gene candidates doesn't necessarily correlate with protein expression. So with proteomics data, we can have some additional evidence uh, for the safety and efficacy of a gene's uh, coded protein as a drug target. Proteomics data from non-diseased tissues were retrieved from three different uh, proteomics atlases. The first, the human protein atlas, the human proteome map, and also um, a GTEx proteome project. So now in the apiter, the user can view the protein expression levels from different normal tissues and cell types to identify like if there's any areas in the body where a candidate protein has low expression um, and it might be a safer target. So as an overview, uh, the aim of this study was to identify targets, uh, senescence targets using the apiter. Our workflow was to first process uh, some senescent samples against a few different backgrounds of normal human cells and tissues um, at both the gene and transcript levels. And then we validated these targets by looking for an association with aging uh, using data from the GTEx consortium. So first uh, to gather senescent cell data, we searched for uh, studies providing RNA-seq from multiple replicates of RS cells. And in total, we analyzed 13 different data sets from six in vitro studies of senescence. And something just to note is that uh, by design of many of these in vitro senescence studies, most samples uh, happen to be from human fibroblasts. The transcript transcriptomic data uh, from each of these studies was processed by the aperture for targets, and then we aggregated the results uh, from the 13 data sets. So this is kind of what the Apiter interface looks like. Um, first, we uh, selected to analyze the senescent samples at both the gene and transcript levels. These samples were processed against three normal tissue backgrounds, which were bulk RNA-seq from GTEx and ARCHIS-4, and then uh, single cell data from Tabula sapiens. So this single cell data set was added to the Apiter uh, by another fellow summer scholar, Reed Fleischman. We also decided to prioritize membrane proteins because of their immunotherapeutic potential. And we wanted to check that the protein expression levels of the candidates um, are low in normal tissues. So uh, we selected this option to visualize protein expression uh, with those three proteomic resources. And then with these parameters, the APITER performs differential expression analysis using LIMA. Uh, it returns the candidates that are highly expressed in the senescent sample, along with these requested visualizations. So each senescent cell sample uh, was analyzed for the top 20 targets. And initially this produced just over 600 uh, membrane protein coding genes that are highly expressed in at least one senescence analysis condition. We also filtered this list um, by checking for agreement at the transcript level. So essentially gene targets were kept if one of their transcripts were among the top 200 transcript targets in any analysis condition. Um, in the second step, it also allowed us to identify if there's any splice variants or isoforms that might be specific senescence markers. We then also filtered for targets that were consistent across multiple conditions. So we removed any proteins that weren't common targets across different RS samples and normal tissue backgrounds. And then finally, because we're interested um, in cellular senescence, specifically in the context of human aging, 
we wanted to identify targets whose expression uh, is elevated in older compared to younger tissues. So to do this, we used the tumor gene target screener uh, to identify transcripts highly expressed in older tissue samples from GTEx, so ages 70 to 79, relative to tissues ages uh, 20 to 29. So we took the uh, top 200 transcripts from these 47 uh, different aged tissues and cell types as like kind of our reference for finding uh, age-associated targets. There were 29 final membrane proteins that met these criteria. So these were uh, top differentially expressed at both the gene and transcript levels, followed by uh, consistency across multiple analysis conditions, and then finally uh, association with aging. So these are the top differentially expressed membrane proteins uh, that we found in RS. And the genes highlighted in red are those that are age associated. We see that all three normal tissue backgrounds, uh, and so Arches4, GTEx, and Tabula sapiens, they're all represented among these analysis conditions that identified the top targets. These are the targets that uh, appeared in the most conditions, uh, as long with their differentially expressed transcripts and the tissue uh, in which the transcript showed a significant association with age. Each candidate was also searched for direct links to cellular senescence in literature. Uh, and so while most of the top consistent targets are supported uh, by literature as highly expressed proteins in senescence, there's a few of them that we found to be novel candidates. So as an example, uh, a target I'd like to highlight is programmed cell death ligand 2 or PDL2. Um, it binds to an immune checkpoint receptor, which is believed to activate T cell exhaustion. And in various studies of cellular senescence uh, in different tumor types, PDL2 expression, it was found uh, to be significantly upregulated both at uh, the mRNA and the protein level. Um, and upregulation of PDL2 uh, is known to produce immune evasion in senescent tumor cells. There's also a study of mouse models that found PDL2 to be overexpressed in aged mice compared to younger mice. So, in this analysis, um, at both the gene and transcript levels, we found that PDL2 is highly expressed in RS cells compared to all three normal tissue backgrounds. We also found that the protein coding transcript of PDL2 uh, is highly expressed in older fibroblasts and adipose tissue compared to all younger tissues. Um, there was a research group that found that inhibiting PDL2 uh, allowed senescent tumor cells to be cleared by the immune system. So now PDL2 is actually patented by this group uh, as a drug target for removal of damaged uh, and/or senescent cells. Antibodies for PDL2 are also produced and available commercially, so there's potential there for uh, ADC development. And then lastly, as you can uh, kind of see from the proteomics data shown here, um, protein expression of PDL2 is actually elevated in uh, many normal tissues, with the exception of connective and soft tissues. So although it probably wouldn't be a safe universal target for removal of senescent cells, um, it could still be considered as a candidate for targeted removal uh, of senescent cells in adipose tissue or some other soft tissues. An app that I want to highlight um, is the Enricher Knowledge Graph, which is a prototype bioinformatics app um, that was initially developed by Ni Nguyen, who was another summer research trainee. Um, and it's now being hardened by Errol Evangelista, who's a bioinformatician in the Myon lab. So in Richer KG, it can be used to see how genes might relate to each other, as well as to uh, certain phenotypes or diseases. And this is especially useful for exploring any novel targets. So for instance, um, shown here is ITCA11, which was one of the novel drug target candidates um, identified for senescent cell removal. And from the knowledge graph, we can see that there might be some relation with the PI3K AKT signaling pathway, um, which we know is a well-known driver of cellular senescence. As an exploratory analysis, um, we were also interested in identifying if 
there are any pathways or phenotypes that are highly represented among uh, the top genes expressed in RS cells. So we submitted the 32 most common targets across analysis conditions to Enricher, um, and this was without membrane prioritization. And Enricher identified a few significant phenotypic associations among these common senescence genes, including terms uh, that are related to reduced bone mineral density and abnormal immune response. So these are phenotypes that are consistent with uh, the potential role of these targets collectively in some aging-related processes. An interesting association we also noted is that uh, this gene set is enriched for genes downregulated with uh, the JAG1 molecule. And there's evidence that JAG1 drives cellular senescence or drives senescent cell clearance in uh, aged human skin through this notch one uh, signaling pathway. So the senescent cell samples that we analyzed, um, there might be some suppression of pathways linked to JAG1, which is in line with the ability of senescent cells to evade immune clearance in uh, these age-related pathologies. So in the study, um, we identified both novel and known candidate targets for senolytic therapy using the tumor gene target screener apiter. One limitation to note about our approach, though, is that uh, differential expression analysis, it doesn't guarantee that the protein actually has low expression across all normal tissues. But proteomics can be used to further evaluate uh, the efficacy and safety of the target. Overall, we just demonstrated how the tumor gene target screener apiter can in general be used for accessible and informative uh, computational screening to identify immunotherapeutic candidates uh, from transcriptomics. And just as a side note, um, and I suppose as suggested by the name of the apiter, uh, the tumor gene target screener was mainly developed for application in cancer. So uh, my summer internship, I did apply a similar approach to identifying targets for the CPTAC-3 pan-cancer cohort. And the nice thing about this approach with the APTER um, that wasn't really demonstrated in this project is that we can use it to identify any patient-specific targets for one patient or um, cluster-specific targets if we're interested in a subgroup of patients. So as some next steps, um, the targets we identified here would, of course, need to be validated in some follow-up experiments in vitro uh, including development of ADCs. Also, these RS targets uh, should definitely be investigated in other forms of senescence, uh, as well as senescence in different cell types and different stages of senescence. And finally, um, since these targets would eventually also need demonstration in animal models, um, we want to extend this screening approach to the mouse genome from where it can be more directly tested in vivo. So Daniel Clark actually recently added the tabula muris data set as a new background in the APTER, um, and we definitely plan to be adding more soon. So I want to thank um, my fellow summer interns, Reed Fleischman and Yin Nguyen, uh, as well as Daniel Clark for all of their amazing contributions to this project, and a big thanks to Dr. Mayan uh, for his great mentorship. Um, and I think at the end, I'll gladly take any questions, and thank you all very much for listening.